Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So here we're going to be looking at finding the inverse of a matrix by a rather unusual method. So because we want to use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, we'll start by writing down the equation that we'd normally use to find the eigenvalues of A. So that's the characteristic equation. So let's just write down what we'd do first of all. So what we'd normally do is find the determinant of the matrix a minus lambda i, where i is the identity matrix, and put that equal to zero. But there is a formula which you may prefer to use, so let's have a look at what that is. So for a 3 by 3 matrix, the formula is lambda cubed, so lambda is the, the eigenvalue, or the eigenvalues, and then we've got the trace of our matrix being multiplied by lambda squared, and then, this is the most complicated term here. This is going to involve the minus of the terms on the main diagonal. So minus of the terms on the leading diagonal of A. So I'll show you what that means if you're not sure. And that's multiplying lambda. And then we've got the determinant of A at the end. So either write that as set A, or as I've written up above, you may prefer to write that just as the determinant of A. So what we're going to do next is put some numbers in here. So the trace of A, that's just the sum of the numbers on the leading diagonal. So we've got 1 plus 2 plus 4. So we're looking at the diagonal going from top left to bottom right. And that's our coefficient of lambda squared. And the minus of the terms on the leading diagonal, well, if we look at the, um, the first element there, that's the number 1. So the, the matrix that we're interested in here is 2, minus 1, 1, 4. And then the next element in the leading diagonal is 2. So the related 2 by 2 matrix is 1, 2, minus 1, 4. And then the last one, looking at the 4, we're left with 1, 2, 1, 2. So that lot is going to multiply lambda. So now all we've got to do is subtract the determinant of A. So let's have a minus and open a big bracket. To work out the determinant, we need to work with either a column or a row. And the easiest thing I think to work with is the first column, as that's only got ones in it, well, and a minus one. We also need to remember what signs we're using. Let's just write them all down for completeness, although the one we're really interested in, of course, is the first column here. So the first one is going to be one times, and then the determinant we want is two minus one, one four. Then we're taking our minus sign with 2, 2, 1, 4. And then we've got a negative 1. That doesn't change, so it's just going to be minus 2, 2, 2, minus 1. So that is a determinant of A. And so all of that lot, including what was on the previous line, equals 0. OK, so we just need to uh, work that lot out. So we have got lambda cubed minus 1 plus 2 plus 4, 7 lambda squared. And working out those three determinants, we've got 2 times 4 minus negative 1. So that's going to be 9. So then we're adding on 1 times 4 minus negative 2. 2 times 1, so that's going to be plus 6. And
and then we've got 2 minus 2 so that will, that will just give us 0 in there so that will multiply lambda and then working out the numbers in the square brackets that's going to come to 8 plus 1 and then we've got uh, minus and then 8 minus 2 so that will be 6 and then minus negative 6 so that will be plus 6 so that will be 0 so we can write down the uh, characteristic equation lambda cubed minus 7 lambda squared plus 15 lambda minus 9 equals 0 so we have written down the equation that would give us the eigenvalues for this matrix but we don't actually want to find the eigenvalues do we what we're trying to do is use the Cayley Hamilton theorem now the Cayley Hamilton theorem Let's just write down what that tells us. So the Cayley Hamilton theorem tells us that a matrix is the solution of its own characteristic equation. So we can replace lambda by a to get a cubed minus 7a squared plus 15a minus 9. And now I don't just write minus 9 because this is a matrix equation so I've got to put the identity matrix in there equal to zero so now looking at the question we're trying to use the Cayley Hamilton theorem so we've written down what it's given us and we're trying to use it to calculate the inverse of matrix A well there isn't any inverse in this equation is there but we can make one appear if we multiply each element by the inverse of A so if we do that, each power drops by 1, so instead of a cubed, we will have a squared. Instead of a squared, we'll have a. And when we multiply a by its inverse, we get the identity matrix, so that's plus 15i. And then when we multiply the inverse of a by the identity matrix, we get the inverse of a. There's no need to write the identity matrix in there anymore, and 0 stays as 0. Right, so that is the important equation. So we don't need anything else really written on this page anymore, just this equation at the end. So let's give ourselves some more space and put that at the top of the page. Right, that's better. And because we want to find the inverse of A, let's make 9 times the inverse of A the subject. Put it onto one side. So what we now know is that 9 times the inverse of A is a squared minus 7a plus 15i. So multiplying the matrix A by a constant and multiplying the matrix I by a constant is going to be really simple. So the only bit there that's a bit tricky is squaring the matrix A. Other than that, everything is going to be really straightforward. So let's write down a squared. So the simplest way to do this, to make it really clear, is to just write down the matrix A to show that we're multiplying it, and again, by itself. So A times A, and then it will be really straightforward to do the calculation. Right, so let's start with the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. So 1 times 1, 2 times 1, and 2 times negative 1. And then I think we'll go across the top row. So again we're using the first row of the first matrix and the second column of the second one. So that will give us 2 plus 4 plus 2. And the next column will give us 2 minus 2 plus 8. And then on to the second row of the first matrix. So that will be 1 plus 2 plus 1. And then the next column along will give us 2 plus 4 minus 1. And lastly, 2 minus 2 minus 4. And 
going on to the third row of the first matrix, minus 1, plus 1, minus 4, minus 2, plus 2, plus 4, and minus 2, minus 1, and then 4 fours are 16. So that is a squared. So let's just simplify that. A bit of adding and subtracting to do. So that will give us 1, 8, 8, 4, 5, minus 4, minus 4, 4, and 13. Right, so now we can easily write down 9 times the inverse of a using the, uh, the formula that we've already found. So that is equal to a squared, first of all. So that's the matrix we've just found. And then we want to subtract 7 times matrix A. And finally, we want to add on 15 times the identity matrix. So we've got 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So we can now simplify that into one matrix. So nothing to work out for the first one, but we've got to multiply the second one by 7. So we've got minus 7 times 1, and then plus 15 times 1. And then we will have 8 minus 7, 2, so 8 minus 14, and 15 times 0 is just 0. And then similarly for the last element there. And then we've got 4 minus 7, 5 minus 14 plus 15, minus 4, plus 7, and then the last row, minus 4, plus 7, 4 minus 7, and the last one will be 13, minus 28, plus 15. So we are nearly there. So doing the arithmetic will give us 9, negative 6, negative 6, negative 3, 6 and 3, and the last row 3, negative 3 and 0. So that is 9 times the matrix that we actually want. So now we can write down the inverse of A is equal to so let's uh, put it, actually take the ninth inside, so minus six ninths will be minus two thirds, and then minus two thirds here as well. And then we've got minus a third, two thirds, one third, one third, minus a third, and zero. So actually you could probably leave um, a third outside couldn't you probably be a bit uh, a bit neater so you'd have a third outside and instead of one you'd have three and then you'd have um, a minus a two and so on and if you want to check that answer you could multiply that matrix by the original matrix a and you should get the identity matrix so that would be a nice uh, check to do it doesn't matter what order you do it in because whichever way around you should get i so either inverse of a times a or a times the inverse of a you should find you get i